أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سورة يوزاف Part 2 Historical and Geographical Background The historical and geographical details are mentioned just to understand the events in their perspectives and will help the viewers to assimilate things in much better ways. Prophet Joseph alayhi salam was a son of Prophet Jacob and a grandson of Prophet Isaac and a great-grandson of Prophet Abraham Allah's peace be upon them all. The Bible says and the allusions in the Quran also confirm this that Prophet Jacob alayhi salam had twelve sons from four wives. Prophet Joseph and his younger brother Benjamin were from one wife and the other ten from the other wives. Prophet Jacob had settled at Hebron, Palestine where his father Prophet Isaac and before him Prophet Abraham lived and owned a piece of land at Shechem as well. According to the research scholars of the Bible, Prophet Joseph was born in or about 906 BN. C. And the incident with which this story begins happened in or about 890 BN. C. He was 17 when he saw the dream and was thrown into the well. This well was near Dothan to the north of Shechem according to biblical and Talmudic traditions. And the caravan, which took him out of the well, was coming from Gilead Transjordan and was on its way to Egypt. At that time, 15th dynasty ruled over Egypt, whose rulers are known in history as the Hyksos kings. They belonged to the Arab race, but had migrated from Palestine and Syria to Egypt in or about 2000 BN. C and taken possession of the country. The Arab historians and the commentators of the Quran, and this has been corroborated by the recent researches made by the Egyptologists. They were foreign invaders who had got the opportunity of establishing their kingdom because of the internal feuds in the country. That is why there was no prejudice in the way of Prophet Joseph's ascendancy to power and in the subsequent settlement of the children of Israel in the most fertile region of Egypt. They could gain that power and influence which they did because they belonged to the same race as the foreign rulers of Egypt. The Hyksos ruled over Egypt up to the end of the 15th century BC, and practically all the powers remained in the hands of the Israelites. The Quran has made a reference to this in verse 20 of Almeida. He raised prophets among you and made you rulers. Then there arose a great nationalist movement which overthrew the power of this dynasty and exiled 150,000 or so of the Amalekites. As a result of this, a very bigoted dynasty of Copts came into power and uprooted everything connected with the Amalekites. Then started that persecution of the Israelites, which has been mentioned in connection with the story of Prophet Moses Elihi Salam. We also learn from the history of Egypt that the Hyksos kings did not acknowledge the gods of Egypt, and therefore had imported their own gods from Syria, with a view to spreading their own religion in Egypt. This is the reason why the Quran has not called the king who was the contemporary of Prophet Joseph alayhi salam by the title of Pharaoh, because this title was associated with the religion of the original people of Egypt and the Hyksos did not believe in it. But the Bible erroneously calls him Pharaoh. It appears that the editors of the Bible had the misunderstanding that all the kings of Egypt were Pharaohs. The modern research scholars who have made a comparative study of the Bible and the Egyptian history are generally of the opinion that Apophis was the Hyksos king, who was the contemporary of Prophet Joseph alayhi salam. At that time, Memphis was the capital of Egypt, whose ruins are still found on the Nile at a distance of seven kilometers south of Cairo. When Prophet Joseph alayhi salam was taken there, he was 17 or 18 years old. He remained in the house of Artsits for three years and spent nine years in prison and then became the ruler of the land at the age of 30 and ruled over Egypt independently for 80 years. In the ninth or tenth year of his rule, he sent for his father, Prophet Jacob, to come from Palestine to Egypt with all the members of his family and, according to the Bible, settled them in the land of Goshen, where they lived up to the time of Prophet Moses Elihi Salam. The Bible says that before his death, Prophet Joseph, Elihi Salam bound his kindred by an oath. When you return from this country to the house of your forefathers, you must take my bones out of this country with you. So he died a hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him. Though the story of Prophet Joseph, Elihi Salam, as given in the Quran, differs very much in its details from that given in the Bible and the Talmud, the three generally agree in regard to its component parts. We shall explain the differences, when and where necessary, in our explanations. Dreams mentioned in Surah Yusuf. The Surah mentions several dreams that are interpreted by Prophet Yusuf, Elihi Salam Joseph. Here is a list of those dreams along with their interpretations. Dream of eleven stars, the sun, and the moon bowing down to Joseph, Elihi Salam. 
This dream represents the eleven brothers of Joseph and their future submission to him. The sun and the moon symbolize Joseph's father and mother, respectively, also submitting to Joseph's authority. Dream of Joseph and his eleven brothers having sheaves of wheat. This dream represents Joseph's future as a successful and respected leader, while his brother's sheaves are smaller and bow down to Joseph's sheaf, symbolizing their submission to him. Dream of a great fire and the sun, moon, and eleven stars approaching it. This dream represents a future event where Joseph will have a significant impact on the people around him, represented by the sun, moon, and eleven stars. The fire symbolizes the trials and difficulties Joseph will face. Dream of the cupbearer and the baker. This dream represents the release of the cupbearer and the punishment of the baker. In the dream, the cupbearer sees himself pressing grapes into a cup, and the baker sees himself being lifted up on a tree and having his birds eating from his head. The interpretation of the cupbearer's dream is that he will be restored to his position, and the interpretation of the baker's dream is that he will be executed. Dream of seven fat cows and seven lean cows. This dream represents seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. The seven fat cows symbolize the abundant years, and the seven lean cows symbolize the years of famine. Dream of seven green spikes and seven dry spikes. This dream also represents seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. The seven green spikes symbolize the abundant years, and the seven dry spikes symbolize the years of famine. Story of the Queen of Egypt and her friends as mentioned in Surah Yusuf, Queen Zuleika, the wife of the ruler of Egypt, was captivated by the beauty of Prophet Yusuf, Elihi Salah, when he was brought to the court as a slave. She attempted to seduce him, but he refused her advances citing his devotion to Allah. The queen's friends and advisers, upon seeing the beauty of Yusuf, also became enamored with him. Despite Yusuf's rejection, Queen Zuleika persisted in her attempts to win him over, even when her husband returned from a journey and became suspicious of her behavior. To prove his innocence, Yusuf, Elihi Salam suggested that he be imprisoned for a short time until the truth could be revealed. In prison, Yusuf, Elihi Salam continued to display his virtuous character and eventually, he was released and appointed to a high position in the court due to his interpretation of the king's dreams. In the end, Yusuf, Elihi Salam was reunited with his family, and the queen and her friends were left with a newfound respect for his character and beliefs. This story highlights the themes of temptation, virtue, and divine justice, and serves as a reminder of the importance of remaining steadfast in one's faith even in the face of temptation. Brief summary of the main themes covered in each set of 10 verses. Verses 1 to 10. The story of Yusuf and his dreams of greatness, and the jealousy of his brothers towards him. Verses 11 to 20. Yusuf's brothers plot against him, and he is sold into slavery. Verses 21 to 30. Yusuf rises to a position of power in Egypt, and is falsely accused of a crime. Verses 31 to 40. Yusuf, Elihi Salam, is imprisoned but he continues to have faith in Allah and interprets the dreams of his fellow prisoners. Verses 41 to 50. Yusuf is released from prison and becomes a trusted advisor to the Pharaoh. Verses 51 to 60. The famine in Canaan and the arrival of Yusuf's brothers in Egypt to buy food. Verses 61 to 70. Yusuf, Elihi Salam, recognizes his brothers, but they do not recognize him. He tests them and they confess to their past wrongdoings. Verses 71 to 80. Yusuf, Elihi Salam forgives his brothers and reunites with his father. Verses 81 to 90. The story of Yusuf serves as a reminder of the power of Allah's plans and the importance of having faith in difficult times. Verses 91 to 100. The Sora shifts focus to the importance of following the guidance of the Quran and avoiding the temptations of the devil. Verses 101 to 111. The Sura concludes with a reminder of the rewards for those who have faith and do good deeds and the consequences for those who reject the truth. Lessons learned from reading Surah Yusuf include the importance of being patient in the face of adversity, the dangers of jealousy and deceit, and the power of forgiveness and reconciliation. Additionally, the Surah emphasizes the idea that God is always in control and that good things can come from difficult situations. Overall, Surah Yusuf provides a powerful message of hope, perseverance, and trust in the plans of Allah. Alhamdulillah, today we completed our reading of Surah Yusuf. May Allah gives us sense to understand and implement teachings of Quran in our lives. Amin. Thanks.